just for people who haven't thought this through and aren't familiar with it, can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary? AI is everywhere. People who weren't quite sure what it was are playing with it on their phones. Is that good or bad? Yeah, so I've been um, thinking about AI for a long time since I was in college, really. The, the smartest creatures, as far as you know, on this earth are humans, um, is our defining characteristic. Yes. Um, we're obviously uh, weaker than, say, chimpanzees, and less agile, um, but real smarter. Now, what happens when something uh, vastly smarter than the smartest person uh, comes along in silicon form? Uh, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in that circumstance. It's called the singularity. It's, you know, it's a singularity like a black hole, because yes. you, you don't know what happens after that. It's hard to predict. So I think we should be cautious with uh, AI. Um, and we should, I think there should be some government oversight uh, because it affects, the, it, it's a danger to the public. And so when you, when you have things that are a danger to the public, so food, food and drugs, that's why we have the Food and Drug Administration right. and the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, uh, the FCC. Uh, we, have, we have these agencies to oversee things that uh, affect the public, where there, there could be public harm. Um, and you don't want companies cutting corners uh, on safety um, and then having people suffer as a result. So uh, that, that's why I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI uh, regulation. Um, so that I think regulation is, it's not fun to be regulated. It's, it's sort of, sort of uh, somewhat of a, somewhat arduous to be, to be, to be regulated. Um, I have a lot of experience with regula uh, regulated industries because obviously uh, automotive is hi highly regulated. You can fill this room with all the regulations. The same thing is true with rockets. You can't just willy-nilly you know, shoot rockets off, or not big ones anyway, because um, the FAA is, uh, oversees that. I think we should uh, take this seriously and, and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI, uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably, hopefully, grudgingly be accepted by uh, the, the major players in, in, in AI. I think we'll have a better chance of, of um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. So, but all regulations start with a perceived danger, and planes fall out of the sky, or food causes botulism. Yes. I don't think the average person yes. playing with AI on his iPhone perceives any danger. Can you just roughly explain what you think the dangers might be? Yeah, so the, 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 the danger, uh, really, AI is um, more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. There's movies like Terminator, but I, it wouldn't quite happen like Terminator um, because the, the intelligence would be in the data centers. Right. Uh, the robot's just the end effector. But I think perhaps uh, what you may be alluding to here is that um, regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. That's correct. If that's the case for AI, and we only put in regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. There's great potential for good, um, but there's also potential for bad. And so if, if you've got some um, radical new technology, you want to try to take the set of actions that maximize probably it will do good and minimize probably it will do bad things. Can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary? Like what could it do? What specifically are you worried about? If you have um, a super intelligent uh, AI that is capable of writing uh, incredibly well and, and in a way that is very influential, um, you know, convincing, uh, and then and, and, is, and is constantly figuring out what is more, what is more and what is more convincing to people over time, and then enter social media, for example, Twitter, uh, but also Facebook and others, you know, um, and and potentially manipulates public opinion in a way that is very bad. Um, how would we even know? And all of that's going to come down the pipes within the next year. Hang on to your hats. Ladies and gentlemen, giants are going to walk the earth once more, and we're going to live through that, maybe. I think we, we need to 
really be, I, mean, I think we need to regulate AI safety, frank, frankly. I think of any technology which is potentially a risk to, to people, like if it's aircraft or uh, you know, cars or uh, medicine, we have regulatory bodies that um, oversee the public safety. It is, I think, actually a bigger risk. How many of you know what chat GPT is? Not very many. So I'll tell you what chat GPT is, just so you know, because you need to know this. And I don't know what sort of technological revolution this is. Gutenberg press level? It's something like that. This is a big deal. So this AI system, it's a general language processing model, was released about a week ago, a week and a half ago. and. Uh, I, I went and interacted with it. You can, it's an AI system, artificial intelligence system. It basically is trained on, well, a massive corpus of, of spoken and, or of text. So it's derived its models of the world from the analysis of human speech, essentially. It, it isn't using real world data yet, but that will be happening certainly within the next year. So, and chat GPT analyzes a very large corpus of text and that corpus is growing all the time. Now it's already sophisticated enough. I went on to it last week and I said, okay, some of you know I, I've written these books, 12 Rules for Life and then Beyond Order, 12 more rules because you know, you can't have enough rules. And I asked it, this is what I asked it to do. I said, write me an essay that's a 13th rule for Beyond Order written in a style that combines the King James Bible with the Tao Te Ching. That's a pretty difficult, that's pretty difficult to pull off, you know. Any one of those things is hard. The intersection of all three, that's impossible. Well, it wrote it in about three seconds, four pages long, and it isn't obvious to me, for better or worse, that I would be able to tell that I didn't write it. Right, right, and Okay, and that's pretty impressive, although, you know, maybe not its relationship to what I've written, but the fact that it could do that grammatically perfectly, right, and quite impressive philosophically. I also had it write an essay on the intersection between the Taoist version of ethical morality and the ethics that are outlined in the Sermon on the Mount, which it just nailed, got that dead right, br brilliant. Again, it took it about three seconds. There was a, a computer engineer who purported to work for Tesla. He asked GPT, chat GPT, he said, look, I work for Elon Musk, but I haven't been doing much for the last week, so I need you to write me 10 bullet points about what I probably would have done as a, as a engineer at Twitter. What 10 things did I do last week that were productive and valuable? And oh, if you don't mind, write me the accompanying computer code that goes with each project. And it did that too, three seconds, and the computer code works. Right, and so, okay, so that's, that's already there. So then a university professor did this. He thought, oh, that's interesting. Any student will be able to write any essay on any topic with chat GPT. And uh, someone gave it an SAT, by the way, and it scored about as well as the average student in a well-functioning public university. So that's how smart it is. So that's basically an IQ test. He said, write me an essay, gave it a topic, wrote the essay, he said, now grade it. He said, if we can automate the students, we should be able to automate the professors too. And so it provided a complete comprehensive analysis of its own essay with grade. Someone else asked it, write the screenplay and describe the characters for the next $900 million Hollywood blockbuster. It's like, bang, plot, characterizations. Then someone else took the descriptions of the actors and said generate computer photorealistic computer images for each actor and, it did, and all the AI systems could do that so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next now we have an AI model that can extract a model of the world from the entire corpus of language all right and it's it's smarter than you and it's going to be a hell of a lot smarter than you in two years so you can get ready for that too but it's not that smart yet because it's just a humanities professor at the moment it doesn't test its linguistic knowledge against the real world. 
that's what a scientist does, right? You come up with a theory that's linguistically predicated and then you throw it against the world and see if it sticks. And then the world tells you whether or not your linguistic construction is valid. But the new AI systems will be able to extract out patterns from the world itself, from images and so forth, and then be able to test their linguistic constructions against the world, and so they'll practice just like scientists. And the most advanced models are going to use text and image and action as well, because they'll be able to model human action. And so, and all of that's going to come down the pipes within the next year. So hang on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because what did my friend Jonathan Pajot say? Giants are going to walk the earth once more, and we're going to live through that, maybe.